Okay, so for this video, we'll be looking at raster calculator and how to create a variable rate map pretty much, or this will be the first part of it. So we got our Malik 3 phosphors. Um, next question is, how do we turn this into, you know, a recommendation for how many pounds of phosphorus we need per acre? So the first thing we need to do is actually go find out the information that we need to complete this. So if you go in and you um, Google soil test interpretations, fertilizer recommendations from K-State, should find something along this lines. And a nice thing is, for all the recommendations, they have basically an algorithm here, or pretty much an equation that tells you how they come up with the recommendations. So for this one, we're coming down to um, the phosphors. And before we do that, okay, we're going to stop right here really quick. So this will be a phosphorus recommendation for a 100 bushel corn crop. And you'll notice here, here's our P205 removal rates. And this is corn per bushel. So per bushel, we're removing 0.33 pounds of P205. This will become important here in a little bit. But we'll go ahead and scroll down here. And in this instance, we're going to use, so there's recommendations for P and K or sufficiency recommendations, I should say. And there's also build and maintain recommendations. So we're actually doing a four year build and maintain on this build. So I'm using this equation right here, that top one. So let's go back to our ArcGIS Pro. And what function are we gonna to use to do this? So if you go to geoprocessing, and I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, you type in raster calculator, and you should come up with something like this. And you're going to select the image analysis one. And go ahead and click it again. So this is where we pretty much put in our equation for what we're wanting to do. So I'll go ahead and minimize this down so we can see what we're doing. So it looks like here we got, um, we'll just basically put in this equation pretty much. So 20 which the 20 stands for basically where we're wanting to bring our phosphorus levels to. So 20 minus our current PPM. It always puts a space in here, so you probably want to take that out so it reads it correctly. 20 minus that, so pretty much at this point in time, we're calculating what our deficit is. Um, so if it was like 15 part per million, a certain spot would be 20 minus 15. So we need to build our soil five part per million over the course of four years. And then this 18 stands for how many pounds of phosphorus it takes roughly per part per million. And that's just a rough estimate on a generic Kansas soil. So times 18. And we'll put in our next parenthesis. Years to build. We're going to do a four year build on this one. And after this, so this is pretty much how much phosphorus we need to apply in each spot over the course of four years to build it. And that's without removing anything. So we also need to know how much we're removing with our grain for this current crop. So we're shooting for 100 bushel corn. So 100 times, we already know that it's 0.33 pounds per bushel. So 100 times 0.33, so that's roughly 33 pounds of phosphorus that we're removing with the grain. So go ahead and put our plus in here, plus 33. We can go ahead and run this. Actually, we'll name the rename it here. We'll name it P Rec. Okay, we'll go ahead and run that. Nope, oh, we're missing something here. Um, it doesn't like me for some reason. Nope, oh, need a divide here. There we go. All right, so there is our recommendation. So you notice we go up to 95 and all the way down to negative 34. And to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure a an applicator cannot pull off phosphorus off of a certain part of the field and put on another spot. So we need to go ahead and correct this. So we can come down here and we're gonna utilize these conditional statements and we're gonna use this first one. And we can go ahead and click on that. And it's going to put in this box and everything. What we're looking for is this first parenthesis. So you can back up your equation up to that point. 
So what this is telling us is we're going to run this equation and if it is less than zero then we want it to turn into zero. Oops. So if this equation winds up being less than zero, we're going to turn it to zero. And if not, then we're going to utilize this equation. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that and put it in there. And hopefully everything matched up correctly. I think so. So it's kind of messy right now. But so if this equation is less than zero, then equals zero. And if it's um, not less than zero, then we're going to do the equation. So I need to go ahead and cap it off with a parenthesis. And we'll go ahead and run that. Oh, we did catch that right there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, try it again. All right, there we go. Had a couple extra things in there. So you can see now we basically turned it into all those negative numbers into zero, which is up in this region. And rate controllers do not read like floating data, raster data, so we need to turn it to an integer. So within raster calculator, we can go ahead and use that function. So there's our integer function. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Basically, you're just going to surround the whole equation. So we have our parentheses up front. We need to smack one on the back here. And we'll go ahead and run it again. And you can see now it's an integer form. So it's 95 with no zeros behind it. But we know that we don't apply straight up phosphorus. Rate controllers read like pounds of phosphorus. Um, something along those lines, you know, or gallons if you're using like a sprayer. So for this one, we're just going to go ahead and make it simple. And within this equation, we can go ahead and turn it into um, our pounds. Let's use DAP for this. So we know that DAP is 46% phosphorus. So if we go ahead and go in one parenthesis, so you want to be basically inside of all this, and we want to go ahead and convert it to an integer after it does do this function. But we divide this by 0.46, which is our concentration of phosphorus within DAP, and we can go ahead and run it again. And there's a recommendation for phosphorus using DAP. So let's go ahead and change the name here. P rec pounds of DAP. All right, let's go ahead and run that. All right, so we changed our name. I'll go ahead and get rid of that one. And we'll go ahead, I'll, I'll make, make it colorful so you guys see what's going on. All right, so now we can see our different levels. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn all this raster data into polygons. So that way our rate controller can see where we're at in the field, change our rates, um, all that jazz. So if we go back to our geoprocessing, and we'll get back out of this, and we're going to type in raster to polygon, pretty much what we're trying to do. There's our conversion tool. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to input our pounds of P using DAP. And we're going to base our polygons off the value, which is this 18, 48, 74, all that jazz. And we can go ahead and run that. And they'll probably wind up with a really messy map. So if we zoom in here, we can see there's polygons all over the place. It actually creates an attribute table for us. So we can go through here and see that this particular polygon was a rate of 22. This one was 37, 86. So it's like 
all over the board. And you can see there is quite a few different rows here. And I can tell you for a fact a rate controller is not going to read 10,000 different polygons while it's going through the field. It won't be able to change that quick, let alone just hold all the information within itself. So, need to go ahead and pretty much dumb this down so that way it can go ahead and read all this. So, what we're going to do is go to calculate. Or, cal field, or calculate field. You can type this in in geoprocessing. You'll get the same thing. That's just a little quick way to do it. And we're going to go ahead and input our table from this right here. And we're going to rename our grid code. So that is pretty much our pounds of P205 we're putting on. And we're not going to use Python 3. Go ahead and type in Arcade. It's just kind of some, some generic stuff that Arc Pro has to offer. And we're going to do a round. So we're going to round all this data to a specific number. So every like 20 pounds, every 30 pounds, something along those lines. Um, so that way we can get these polygons a little little more generic so our controller can read it while we're going through. So type in round. And we're going to go ahead and put in our grid code because we're wanting to round it by our grid code. And I usually just go ahead and put parentheses around the grid code altogether. And we're going to divide it by then basically what we're wanting round our numbers to. So uh, let's do, what was our range here? Let's do every 20 pounds. So divide by 20, putting in our comma zero. And what this is going to do right here is it's going to go ahead and calculate this. So let's go ahead, I'll just put one through my phone really quick. So we'll do this 112. So what's going to do is 112 divided by 20. And that equals 5.6. And then what it's going to do is go ahead and round that number to 5. Or actually, not to 6. It's 5.6. Round it to 6. So, and that's not what we want. We want it to be by 20s. So then we multiply it back by 20, bring it back to its value uh, or relative value. So 6 times 20 equals 120. So it's going to go ahead and round polygon number 4 to 120 pounds. And I'll do the rest for everything down. So, let me go ahead and run this. And we can see that polygon 4 is now 120 pounds. And everything else is rounded to the 20. So, but we still haven't got rid of all these polygons out here in the field. It's still going to be super confusing for the rate controller. Besides over in this area where it's pretty much zero. <laughs> so, we're going to go ahead and utilize the geoprocessing function called dissolve, which is basically dissolving all the polygons that are similar or the same, I guess, in this case. So input feature will be our raster. And you can rename this stuff. I didn't rename it. I probably should have. And we're going to dissolve that by our grid code because that was our phosphorus rex. And we go ahead and run that. And we can see that is a highly dumbed down map from what it was. So our rate controller can now read this and we'll turn it into something that we can kind of see now. Go to our symbology, unique values, and our grid code is what it is. There it is. I can go ahead and get rid of this, all other values. Remove that. And we're going to go ahead and add this to it. And we can see there is our very bright phosphorus map for this particular field. So, now this rate controller should be able to read this. If you want to export to rate controller, you can right click and go to data. And you can export the features to a file on your computer. And then you can upload that to your rate controller. Or in the case of there's like Case or John Deere, you might have to convert it to a different file that their system can read. So if you have any questions, just let me know, and you have a great day.